here in Greenville today. Two teams that shared the Southern Conference title in 2018 are about to do battle. ETSU at Furman is next. Welcome you into our Ingalls SoCon Game of the Week. So far this season, the number 15 Furman Paladins look like the team to beat in the SoCon. ETSU will try to pull the upset here at Paladin Stadium. And hi, friends, with Jared Singleton, Pete Gannity with you. I think Clay Hendricks, the Furman head coach, said it best. Each of these teams have similar philosophies on offense. They just try to get there in a different way. Yeah, Furman has about five different types of offenses all in one, uh, led by Dan Granger, the quarterback, and also the, the slew of running backs that they have. Meanwhile, in the running game for ETSU, they go to a guy who a year ago was third in the conference in rushing yards per game, Quay Holmes. Quay Holmes, big guy, 6'1", over 200 plus pounds. ETSU has a more traditional style of offense. They want to kind of get four yards in a kind of dust. Uh, they do a great job of it, so it should be a very physical but great matchup today. Now that Furman running game, which amassed more than 400 yards against Mercer last week, they've got a deep stable led by Devin Wynn. Yeah, Devin Wynn, he's averaging about seven yards per carry. Uh, he's doing a great Great job, as you said, have a lot of running backs, a lot of depth, so it should be a great day for running and a great day for football. Wynn is second in the SOCON this season in yards per game at just under 95. A year ago in Johnson City, ETSU rallied from 21 down in the third quarter and knocked off Furman by two. The Paladins have won 15 out of 17 in this stadium against the Bucks. They'll try to continue that today. We kick it off when we come back. Second down and four for ETSU. Mitchell underneath and his tight end Atkins nowhere to go in the Furman defense which has stepped up big throughout this uh, early going of the season uh, a week ago. They limited Mercer to just 283 yards and they're off to a good start here this afternoon. Furman's defense, they fly around Pete. You know, they, they gain tackle. You, see, you always see 11 guys to the ball. First time the Paladins have lost yard. A couple of fakes, Granger buys himself some time. Ooh. Fires, caught. Touchdown. Beautiful throw to Ryan DeLuca from Darren Granger. It's the third TD on the season for DeLuca, and the Paladins strike first. It's going to be to be able to sustain drives long term and put points on the board. Amir Trapp looking to return the Garrett Taylor punt off the stiff arm, tries to turn the corner and does at the 30. And a decent return. He came into the game averaging nine yards per run back. And That'll cover about that distance. Paladins will go back on offense just beyond their own 35. I, t I, t I tell you, Pete, back in the day, you could do a lot of these blindside type hits, uh, blindside type blocks. But as you see here, <laughs> he kind of has his hands <laughs> up like, I'm not trying to hit him. I'm not trying to hit him. I'm just kind of shielding the guy. Uh, it's kind of showing me the evolution of the game. Because uh, back in my day, he, he's, getting his, he's getting his head taken off. And your day wasn't all that many days ago. It wasn't, Pete. Mr. All-America at Wofford back in the early part of this decade. Been a good start so far for this Furman running game. We'll see. Grayson Atkins come out, and this could be a milestone field goal. He's able to convert it. He holds the Furman record for 14 straight, and that also matches the Southern Conference record for most consecutive field goals. Held by none other than ETSU's J.J. German, who wrapped up his career last year. So Atkins can become the all-time conference leader in consecutive makes if he's able to connect on an attempt of just under 30 yards on the way, and it's good. So Atkins, who is having a phenomenal career with Furman, now has another notch in his belt. He puts his team ahead by 10 early in the second quarter. So back to play. Second down and short. A pitch this time. And Watkins Ooh. with another weapon. Hit hard. Oh, and ball. Knocked out of the turf. Ball is loose. Scramble wow. for it. Bucks say they have it, and they do. Huge. He took a <laughs> Wow, he took a, a hit on that one, Pete. He said he protects the ball. He makes good decisions. And he does exactly what Coach Sanders asked of him. Good Holmes job. able to bounce Ooh. outside. Steps through a tackle. Caught from behind. But it'll be first and goal for ETSU. able to step away from Brian Okay, Travis Blackshear saved the touchdown. They wildcat with the backup, and he's in. Touchdown. 
They went to their backup quarterback, Cameron Lewis. At first, I wasn't sure if it was McGue, who we've also <laughs> seen run the Wildcat. He wears 17. Lewis wears 18. He's got his second touchdown of the campaign. And just like that, ETSU's on the board. You know, this is really a, a simple quarterback power type play to the outside. As we said, they will use a variety of quarterbacks today. Here they went to Lewis. Yeah, just a real simple play, and he was able to bounce to the outside. He's athletic and quick enough uh, to kind of stretch this play uh, to get it into the end zone. Great job. But, you know, it's going to be interesting, Pete. You know, Furman right now, they're facing a little adversity. You know, they turned the ball over. They gave up, gave up a touchdown. It's only a three-point game. There's a lot of time left. It's going to be really interesting to see how this Furman team, how they handle being put in this kind of situation. And we welcome you back in on our Ingalls SoCon Game of the Week. Furman a 10-7 lead of the break. ETSU really changing the momentum, forcing that turnover in the second quarter. Yeah, if you're ETSU, you have to be excited uh, with what you've done so far in the first half. You're still in the game. You've been able to kind of contain Furman's uh, high-power offense. So if you're Coach Sanders, the second half could be yours if you're able to capitalize on different opportunities that you may have. Good job adjusting by ETSU. First half highlights and a Furman team that went three and out in its opening series, but they would then get things going the next two times they had the ball, and they are so tough to contain because of their balance. They are, and they have a lot of depth at the running back position, even though they lost Watkins so far in the first half. They have, they still have Granger, who's a, who's a weapon in himself, uh, and they do such a good job blocking up front. So they're going to have opportunities to put more points on the board in the second half, uh, but they got to protect the football. They can't turn the ball over. Paladin's also doing a good job defensively, but a Furman ball club that has the arm of Granger to go along with his legs. He connected with Ryan DeLuca as he zipped one in there for the first touchdown of the game. Corey Watkins got off to a good start. We saw him, though, have to be carted off after he took that hard hit from Artavius Smith. But the Paladins, a team that We've had a big advantage in the total yards category, but ETSU has tightened that up. Quick look at our first half stats, and you'll see in total yards, Furman has the edge 174 to 144. One turnover in the opening half of play, but a big one indeed. Yes, yeah, it's been pretty balanced so far between both teams um, besides that one turnover. So the second half should be a good one, Pete. All right, we'll come back with our second half action. I'll take a look around the Southern Conference, our Ingalls SoCon Game of the Week here in Greenville. We're back after this. And putting your field goal team in position to put points on the board to tie this ball game. Tyler Keltner, a 34-yard attempt to tie the game, and he does. Keltner now five out of six on the season, makes his first attempt of the day. So here we are, 5.47 to go, third quarter, a tie game here at Paladin Stadium. Third and long for the Bucks. Third downs in the game, they're 33%. That's just slightly below their season average. Mitchell to throw, pressure comes, and he's taken down. First sack of the game for the Paladins. And it's courtesy of Drew Seabrook, the defensive end. He steps up and gets his fourth sack of the season. He's the Paladin, sacks and tackles for loss leader. Great job by Drew, creating pressure. You know, th they haven't had a sack all game. But what a better time to get a sack where it's third and long and you know it's a passing situation, able to pin your ears back and get after the uh, get after the quarterback. Great job by that Furman defense. Hopefully that's some momentum they can pick up on. They should get great field position. And if so far they've been humbled right now with only 10 points on the board. And uh, this offense is, it has, has a little work to do. Granger nearly slips. Now he throws wow. intended for DeLuca. What a catch. Had he not reeled in, you surely would have seen the flags come in. What a play by Ryan DeLuca. He was tied up with the cornerback, Lewis. DeLuca does a great job kind of working, seeing his quarterback in trouble and trying to find a, a way to get open. And does a great job of, of staying focused on the ball and getting dialed in and, and, and seeing it all the way through. And just an amazing job by the quarterback, being able to dance around and keep the play extended with his feet, keeping his eyes downfield and making a great throw. A 10-10 game, a tight one between a couple of teams that shared the SOCON title a year ago. Furman goes unbalanced line, the inside handoff, and the touchdown. Great job. As you saw before, the, right before the snap, they shifted, br bringing that extra guy to the left of the offensive line, and they ran right behind the extra offensive line on the left side. That could be big for the Paladins' defense here on another third down snap. Mitchell just gets it away, oh. and it's picked off. 
And the Paladins, who had three interceptions a week ago, get their first this afternoon. And stepping up to force the big time turnover is Demarcus Clay. Second interception, he had one of those a week ago. Great job by the defensive front, kind of creating a little pressure. And, 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 you know, right there, you know, he does a fantastic job. Clay does a fantastic job kind of playing center field and just reading the quarterback's eyes. When you put in that zone defense and you're the, you're the free safety, your job is to kind of read the quarterback's eyes. And right there, Mitchell kind of led him exactly to where he was throwing the ball. And that kind of shows you the development and opportunities that still need to be worked out if you're ETSU from the quarterback position. But great job by Furman's defense. And they will claim a 26 win in the series that they have dominated here at Paladin Stadium. They're about to go 16 and two against the Buccaneers here on their home field. And that'll do it. Furman Paladins continue a good run against FCS teams. They've now won nine out of 10 against teams on their level and seven in a row. And Furman for the first time since 2012 will start their Southern Conference schedule at 2-0. Yeah, Furman did a good job getting the victory and sealing that today. Uh, but definitely opportunities to get better this week. Coach Hendricks, I think, will look back at this tape. Obviously be excited that they won, but definitely uh, will look at different ways to get better because they're going to need to improve uh, if they want to contend to win a championship this uh, this year. Furman improves to 3-2 and two overall, but they have played five really good games to start this season. Today they were tested about as well as they have been so far, but Darren Granger and the Paladins withstand it. Ryan DeLuca was front and center in this Furman attack, and the Furman team doing just enough defensively against the ETSU Bucks. Paladins now get ready to move on next week for what will be a big battle for them down in Birmingham against Samford ETSU. ETSU, well, they will try to bounce back when they hit the field at home against Wofford next Saturday. 17-10, Furman wins it. On behalf of Jared Singleton and our fine crew here in Greenville, Pete Kennedy saying so long.